Hello friends, welcome to the third video lecture of the series and the today's topic is constraints. As I have already introduced constraints in the first lecture, in this session we will cover them in detail like we will discuss what are constraints, what are the type of constraints and how they behave under loading conditions. Okay. So, what is constraint? Well, constraint word itself means limitations or restrictions. So, these are the structural support conditions that are mathematically expressible as constraints on individual degree of freedom. So, what we can say is that constraints are supports that are used to restrain structure against relative rigid body motion. So, for any component of structure, we have 6 degree of freedom. And 6 degree of freedom means that there are 6 rigid body motions. So, now you will think like what is rigid body motion? Well, if you'll go by the physics definition, a rigid body is a solid body in which deformation is zero or you can say that it is so small that it can be neglected. So, we can say that the distance between any two given points on a rigid body remains constant in time regardless of external forces exerted on it. Now, for an example, let's take a body which is having some length and breadth. So, this is a fiber. It is having specific length and breadth. So what I'm doing, I'm just translating the body in X direction and then in Y direction and this, at the same time, I'm providing rotation to it. So even after displacing from its original position, the fiber is same. Its length and breadth is same, like original length only. So we can say that this motion is a rigid body motion. Okay. Then... For a planar body, planar body means uh, any body in a plane, like a 2D structure. We have three rigid body motions. How? So this is a this is a body in XY plane. So what are the possible motions? What are the possible rigid body motions it can have? So it can translate in X direction. It can translate in Y direction. And it can rotate in XY plane. That is, it can rotate about Z axis. So, these three are the possible motions this body can have. So, what we can say is that for a planar body, we have three rigid body motions out of which two are translation and one is rotation. Okay. Then, for a 3D body, for a 3D body, we have six rigid body motions out of which three are translation and three are rotation. For an example, this is a block. Now, you can translate this block in three directions, either in X, Y or either in Z. Similarly, you can rotate this block about X axis, about Y axis or about Z axis. Okay. So, these were, this was all about the rigid body motion. Now, you know that structural system transfer their loading through a series of elements to the ground. Each connection is designed so that it can transfer or support a specific type of load or loading conditions so that is that this is our next topic and that means we are going to discuss what are the different type of supports so first one is pin joint a pin support can resist both vertical and horizontal forces but not a moment they will allow the structure member to rotate but not to translate in any direction okay but it is also true that a pin connection could only rotate in could only uh, could only allow rotation only in one direction okay so what you will get as a reaction force is you will get one horizontal force and one vertical force or you can say that you will get one reaction force at some angle so this is the representation of the pin joint rx is a horizontal reaction force in x direction and ry is the horizontal reaction horizontal sorry vertical reaction force in y direction so their resultant is r at an angle of theta. Now from simulation, yeah, you can see this. So this is the how pin joint behaves when under any loading conditions. And from this, what you can conclude is like a single pin connection is usually not sufficient to make a structure stable. So another support must be provided at some point to prevent the rotation of the structure. So next joint is hinge joint. Hinge joint uh, is also called as revolute joint. They carry shear and axial forces but not moments. So they allow the jointed members to have different but same displacement. Now see, 
what is prevented is relative displacement of membranes and what is allowed is rotation horizontal and vertical displacements so this is the representation of hinge joint so these two bars as you can see they are joined by a hinge support there is a hinge joint in between so when you'll when you'll make a free body diagram or you'll provide reactions you'll get rx that are equal and opposite directed horizontal and the vertical forces rx and ry and this is the simulation this is how our hinge joint is going to behave under loading conditions okay so uh, next one is roller joint okay roller joints uh, roller joints are used between two surfaces okay which can move relative between each other and that surface can be horizontal vertical or sloped at any angle the resultant reaction force will be a single force whose direction will be either perpendicular will be perpendicular to the surface either it is towards or away that totally depends upon the what kind of loading what 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 are the loading conditions okay so rotation axis uh, rotation axis is not fixed in the roller joint so it is so it lets the surface to create a linear motion it can only carry vertical loads and so we can say that they prevent normal translation but it, it is capable of tangential translation so this is the representation of roller joints so what you will get is one reaction that that, that is for vertical loads because that, as you know it ca it can carry only vertical loads and this is the how it is going to behave under loading conditions next is fixed joint fixed fixed connections are very common and they demand greater attention during construction because they are the they are often the source of building failure so fixed supports can resist vertical and horizontal forces as well as movement since they restrain both rotation and translation they are also known as rigid supports this means that a structure only needs one fixed support in order to be stable so the representation of fixed supports always includes two forces one will be the horizontal force one will be the vertical force and then a moment in this the red bar is the fixed it is a fixed one so it then you can say that it's a fixed joint now the next one is link joint in link joint joint bodies are connected to manage force and movement and in this translation is allowed only perpendicular to the link and restricted in the direction of link so what is prevented is translation in the direction of link and what is allowed is translation perpendicular to the link and the rotation see here this our uh, linkage is making an angle theta with the horizontal so when you will represent this will get a force resultant force at an angle theta and what are the possible motions Let's see it is it can move perpendicular to the link but it it is not allowed to move in the direction of link so this is our link joint so this was all about joints now in order to find the stresses and strain one need to avoid the rigid body motion why see from the basic definition of strain what what you know is that strain is defined as the change in length of fiber divided by the original length of fiber but in case of rigid body motion there will be no change in length of fiber so there will be no deformation which means no stress and strain so in order to avoid the rigid body motion one needs to apply constraint that all possible rigid body motions can be avoided okay so let's take an example for this case yeah we can see that there is a random structure which is not subjected to any constraints okay so if we apply load at this type it is a simple dynamics problem which will result in a rigid body translation and rotation body will rotate or translate what whatever low uh, whatever type of load you will apply it will accordingly translate or rotate okay now as there are two translations and one rigid body motion now what i am doing is i am providing a pin constraint to this okay so now from basic definition of pin joint that we have covered what you know is what we can say is that the two translation are constrained but still there is one motion that is left which one is that is rotation still it can rotate it can rotate about that point right pin point so in order to avoid that rotation let's apply the roller joint 
So now what we'll do is we'll apply a roller joint whose orientation is offset from the axis shown. So why the offset from the axis? We'll know more about the reason in the detail soon. So let's take a simple rectangular box which is subjected to pin and roller joint such that all motions are constrained. Now can you please pause for a moment and think why its rigid motion is constrained? What Now what I'm going to do is let's change the orientation of roller such that the roller is perpendicular to the axis. Okay. If I say that the infinitely small body rotation is not constrained, what will be your expression? Really? Is that same like this girl? Don't worry. Let's see why it happens. So if we go back to the basic definition of a rigid body, the fiber length must remain unchanged. Okay. So let's investigate that does it remain constant or changes. Now we'll do the mathematics. The question that one need to ask first is what are the approximations we use while solving the solution? The first approximation that we are going to use is it is a approximation of linear analysis. What, what it says is for a very small angle, sine theta is, e, is approximate to theta and cos del theta is approximate to 1. That means now if we rotate the structure about pin joint, this is a pin joint and now I'm going to rotate it about at some small del theta and use simple geometry. What you'll see is that the mathematically the length remains constant. So even after computing analytically or performing simulation, it will not fetch good result cause of linear approximation. See, initially the length was L and after deflecting it by an angle del theta, it it, its length will change to L cos theta, right? So what will be the final length? It will be L plus del L. So del L is equal to what is the increment in length? Initial length minus initial length minus the final length. So when you will do this and you will apply the approximation that we have used, cos theta will reduce to 1 and 1 minus 1 will give you 0 which will ultimately give you delta L is equals to 0. Okay? So I hope now it's clear to you. So we can handle this type of problem by using nonlinear analysis. And this is something that we will cover in our upcoming lectures in details. So thank you. And if you like the video, please subscribe for more interesting videos. Thank you.